standing uh, for a moment. You may not be able to see the students. <laughs> what we'll do is we're actually going to move them toward the front. They're going to introduce themselves. They are from Paxinosa and uh, from March Elementary School. Okay, so would you walk that way, please? Go ahead, guys. Don't go too far so I can reach this microphone. <laughs> They will share. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think our microphone will reach. But how about if we start with you? If you would please say your name to the group that's here. They do it without a microphone, which means you're using a recess voice. <laughs> Hi, my name is Amelia Monon. Hi, my name is Rose Moody. Hi, my name is Jessica Lee. Hi, my name is Seven of the students are from March Elementary School. One is from Paxinosa, and they will lead us in the pledge this evening. President, uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Mrs. Demetro, who is going to uh, share with us some very good news this evening. Yes, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Well, tonight we would like to take this opportunity to recognize an individual who has a very long history of supporting public education in East Day. Mrs. Trajano, would you please come forward? Mrs. Trajano and her husband, Dr. Trajano, have um, been very gracious to the East Area School District. They have a foundation called the Trajano Foundation. Her husband, Dr. Trajano, is a 1943 graduate of Eastern Area School District, Eastern Area High School. He was on the football team and the band, which I said, how did he manage to do that? <laughs> you know that is impossible today. Um, the Trajano Foundation has also donated uh, money for our teachers to go to Colonial Williamsburg Institute in the summer. They paid for the entire trip as well as providing money for our teachers over the, uh, the years. Okay. So we now have the foundation for the Easton Schools, and I'm sure most of us are aware of that, that is a new foundation, uh, to serve as the organization to facilitate such gifts and to honor such benefactors as Mrs. Rajano and the foundation. On behalf of the Eastern Area School District community, I'd like to cap uh, thank Kathy Miller, our executive director of the Foundation for Easton Schools, and I'd like you to come to the microphone to acknowledge this generous gift of the Trajano yeah. Foundation. <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, hello, everyone. For those who don't know me, I am Kathy Miller, the executive director of the Foundation for Easton Schools, and we're very happy tonight to have this opportunity to honor Mrs. Trajano and her foundation's donation while shedding some light on the new foundation as well. Large gift presentations such as this helps us to emphasize our mission and spread the word about who we are and what we do. The Easton Area Mark Spa High School Music Department is nationally renowned and Mrs. Trigiano's gift will go a long way towards supplying much needed musical instruments. So on behalf of the Foundation for Easton Schools, I'd like to say thank you so much for your support. It's thank always you. about the kids. Yeah. I'd like to also introduce Carol Ludy, our wonderful band director for Easton Area School District. Fantastic job, and she would like to honor Mrs. Trajano with um, a certificate of appreciation. Oh, thank you very much. I'll trade you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What? Thank you, Mrs. Dimitri. I appreciate that. Oh, number three, Superintendent's report. We're going back to our superintendent. Right. 
Uh, and thank you once again, Ms. Mr. John, very much. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you, Carol. I'd like to continue our uh, moment, uh, moment of presentations uh, tonight. Um, <clears throat> this is very unique and special for, I think, for a school district uh, and, and also for a superintendent because we don't often recognize students for boxing. But we have a student at the high school by the name of Elijah Pinnebone who happens to be related to the person to my right here and to, uh, uh, from your perspective, my your left, and Elijah is a very successful boxer, and we really felt it was important for us to recognize what he's done with his boxing career thus far. Elijah's a sophomore, he's a 15-year-old uh, student at Easton High School, and he won his first national boxing title three weeks ago in Doraville, Georgia, in the 145-pound division class. And that was held, uh, he competed at a boxing tournament held at the Paul Murphy Title Belt Tournament of Champions. Elijah, would you like to come forward, please? Where are you? There we go. And he brought his belt. And, uh, Elijah, we'd like to uh, recognize your achievement and uh, congratulate you on this. Uh, on this honor. This, by the way, he is his uh, fourth big event and fourth big honor. Uh, he won the 2014 State Silver Gloves at 132 pounds, and he won the 2014 Pennsylvania Regional Golden Gloves at 138 pounds, and he's been a runner-up in 2013 New Jersey Diamond Gloves at 138 pounds. So, uh, congratulations on all those victories and on behalf of the board we'd like to thank you and um, we know that you would tell you could you tell us your father had a great deal of uh, influence over your big successes here right <laughs> yes good okay there you go congratulations We have tonight a very special treat as well in that we have Mar students from March Elementary School who are here, these students uh, helping to participate in the uh, very special 100th year anniversary at March Elementary School. You probably have to go pretty far to find a school building that's 100 years old and still in service and still housing kids. And we've got uh, one of those buildings at March School and the staff and the students have planned a big celebration this fall. So uh, we have students here who would uh, like to uh, talk to us about that. Um, do we have some? Uh, uh, there, yeah. Yes, we do. Okay, Ms. Barnett is here and she's going to uh, uh, take care of this place. Welcome.
in, in 1914, there were only 12 classrooms in the in, Mar in March in F in FA March Elementary School. Now that number has doubled. In 1914, there were only 35 students in each class. Now that number has been reduced by 15. In 1914, there were only three entrance, entrances to the school. That number has doubled. In, in 1914, there were only two drinking fountains on each floor. There are still only two drinking fountains. <laughs> in 1914, light entered on one side of the room to create more room for blackboards. That is still true. In 1914, the auditorium seated 455 seats. 454 seats, sorry. Now, and used for daily opening and exercises in principal orders. Now it serves as a lunchroom for monthly assemblies. In 1914, the grade level went from kindergarten to 10th grade. Now it only goes up to fourth. In 1914, there was a telephone between the principal and the custodian. Now there are phones in almost every room. Activities. Activities. <coughs> then there was an etiquette class. Now there's a PBIS and, and fame. Clubs and organizations. They used to have archery, posture, Latin, drama, cookery, and handiwork. Now they have Odyssey of the Mind, Safety Patrol, and Leopard Council. There used to be between meal nourishment for underweight children. Now there's breakfast and lunch program. There used to be ice skating on the playground. Now now there was a new playground donated to, to the Friends of March. With the help of the, of the March School PTA, we had a ribbon cutting and the release. Mayor Sal Panto, Representative Bob Freeman, and Superintendent John Reinhart joined us. We sang the March on the Water and Release of the Blues. <coughs> We formally invite everybody. We formally invite everybody. <laughs> hey, no, no. We formally invite everybody to join us for our October event. Thank you, ladies. Any comments? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. <laughs> that and I can tell you I'm looking forward to all those events up there and I hope that we have lots of, uh, of people in the community who help to support this very special anniversary. So thank you all very much. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. We have no communication so we're going to move to number five reports and we're going to go to letter A. Are you joining Ms. Price? Okay, well, basically, doing contract negotiations still um, with um, the CEA, the teachers, and the ESPA for the um, power professionals for the contracts of the 2013 to 2018 uh, school years. And we have a meeting tomorrow. I also have some handouts for the board members, so I'll pass them down. And that's basically it. Thank you. I can add something. I just received a text that the teacher is overrunning the grant funding company. Oh, thank you. Look at that. You got a note somewhere. Both contracts. That's right. Both contracts. That's right. Wow. Thank you. 
Okay. Ms. Price, we'll stay with you for the public library. Okay. Well, the public library, um, it was a great summer. Uh, the reading program welcomed over 2,000 readers this year. Um, the theme was this Boom Read and Emphasize Science. Um, there was a total of um, 4,846 children that participated in all the summer programs this year, including Bach to Rock at the main library, um, which was for young adults. And uh, the other thing that's happening now is that um, patrons can access the reading history online um, right now by opting into a program at the library through Webpack. So if you go and look up something, and say, oh, what did I research before? You can go back and see your reading history. So um, that's basically what's going on at the library right now. Thank you. CIT, Mr. Snyder. Uh, uh, business as usual of CIT. Uh, I'm going to be taking a tour with uh, Dr. Roth, the director, on uh, Friday, October 3rd at 1 o'clock. Um, if there are any other members of the board who uh, may never work in the facility, we'd be welcome to as well. So being in the board of the facility, I look forward to uh, to uh, one on one tour with Dr. Roth. Other than that, nothing else to report. Thank you. Community College, Mr. <coughs> had a couple interesting meetings and it's always nice when we can talk about how flexible we are and uh, uh, understanding of what some of the needs are. Uh, one of them is that starting in uh, the fall um, of next year, 2014 right now, is a new program, Heating, Ventilating, Air Conditioning and Refrigeration Technology. Uh, we keep meeting and hearing about the new demands and everything that are required in the technology field as, as well as some of the other fields. And uh, you know, one of the pieces have been how fast we can turn around and start programs with things. BPL uh, about a year ago or so had come forward and said, you know, we don't have enough people to climb poles. And so all of a sudden we started to put up a pole program and uh, getting the students, getting people to go through them, graduate them and everything, and they're out there that they get a certificate, not necessarily a degree, but that they can go out and do that. In addition to that, uh, we did have a successful opening and everything of the Monroe campus, which most of you probably have seen in the paper and everything with various news articles. And lastly, one of the more important things that we're currently working on is middle states. Uh, it's always, as you know, in the school district, an important task to get approved by middle states, and that is one of the tasks that's going on now that we'll be uh, finishing later this year and everything, having our middle states evaluation. That completes my report. Thank you very much. Uh, letter F, or no, I'm sorry, E, Foundation for Eastern Schools, Mr. Buscemi. Uh, I had my first meeting with the Foundation last month, and uh, I still have a lot to learn there. And I was trying to get with Kathy, give like an update on how the Foundation operates, and I give a little presentation at the next meeting. This meeting. Next meeting, yes. Beautiful, thank you. Uh, for Charles Schwinn's Science and Technology Initiative, Mr. Vandenberg. Mr. Vandenberg, being that you sit on the board, would you like to... Uh, At this point, we've had no additional meetings and everything. We have one coming up in October. And uh, the biggest thing is waiting, as you know, I think it was reported in the newspaper that one property was sold. But that's just the beginning because, again, it's when they get past the... Uh, past an end of zero net proceeds that we start to see anything. And so at this point, it's just a matter of forming and starting to look ahead at uh, how we do applications and everything for where funds would go. Thank you very Thank you much. For. Thank you. Legislative, Ms. Member Nelson. Um, PSPA will be having their legislative conference in October that we already have chosen the board members that will be going to that. Um, so I'll have an update report in October regarding that. And um, also there is a ballot in front of everybody to vote on the PSBA officer election. So please take note and check off your votes. Um, I think that's, that's it for now. Thank you, Ms. Ellison. Um, I just want to make everybody aware, uh, Robert Obie is on the phone. Uh, Mr. I know you're like, we have to have Baron. Baron texted me, unfortunately, he uh, is at a funeral and uh, he is unable to get a call at this time. So, Mr. Ovi also asked if he could uh, uh, be in by phone. So, Mr. Ovi is with us. 
Uh, Mr. Cup, the letter H, our student. Yeah, it's my pleasure uh, once again to introduce <coughs> to you our student council executive board president for the 14-15 school year, Morgan White. Hi. <laughs> So, in honor of Patriots Day, the Student Council sent out <coughs> thank yous to all the emergency squads for the contributions within our school community. We thank them with a letter and a pretzel tray. Student Council and Nas National Honor Society held a canned food drive where all the donations went to the Project of Easton. Um, our sophomore and junior class now are working on selling the t-shirts and collecting class dues, and our senior class is working on collecting wood for the bonfire. This week, we're focusing on our freshman elections and our club fair, which will be September 25th and the 26th, open for the freshman and sophomore classes to show them all the clubs we have. Executive Board is working on the homecoming dance, which is November 1st, and it'll be in the high school cafeteria. And, yeah, that's about all we have for right now. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Letter I, BTA, um, Kate, Yeah. Hi, I'm Kate Petrignani. I'm the president of the March PTA, but Tara is ill, so she sent me instead. Our newest initiative is to appoint kindergarten liaisons in each of the elementary schools. These parents will help in our work with the family connections and the school district to make the transition to kindergartens accessible for all kids. The high school uh, PTSA is still trying to fill all of its executive positions, we hope. That will be resolved soon and are open to new and new recruits if any parents want to get involved. The 5-6 PTA in the middle school um, jump started the year having parent volunteers in the fifth grade lunches the first week of school to help kids transition to the new offerings by the cafeteria. The fall PTA dance is coming up on the 26th and they're going to have a, deep, a live DJ dancing snack barn raffle. And the school store is up and running during lunches, one time per week, so the kids have an opportunity to buy school supplies while helping out with their PTA and raising lunch money. In the 7-8 building, <coughs> they're planning a unique event and would love participation from the board. I guess I'll take that as a <coughs> invitation. Or in February, they'll be partnering with the Harlem Wizards. And it's a fundraiser, but it's going to be a fun community outreach event. They're looking for 25 players. So should I tell her we've got <laughs> <laughs> um, from the district to play against the Wizards? Is that like a, a silly basketball program? So, <laughs> all right, this is an amazing event for the whole community to attend. If you're interested in participating, you can contact Marcella Cardone. And I do have her e do you want her email address? It's at mcardone25 at hotmail.com. They would love to see a board member or two on the team. At Forks Elementary PTA, they're selling the kids' stuff books till the 19th, and they're also cur currently collecting lots of giant card numbers. And they're having a class competition, so whichever class uh, generates the most numbers are going to win a pizza party. And at Tracy Elementary, they had a booth at the Palmer Community Days offering fun games and prizes. Tracy PTA is raising funds for the fall field trips for, field trips for each grade level. And through the good fundraising efforts of the past year, the PTA was able to provide, oh, this is interesting, high power fans to each grade and special in the special classrooms. Uh, they were a big help in the early, very hot days of the school year. They were also able to provide four large party a patio umbrellas for the outside courtyard, and these will be especially helpful for the nearby kindergarten classrooms and school staff. And then, as you saw earlier, <coughs> at work, we've been celebrating the 100th birthday of the school, and in October, we have activities that are going on, of, um, like any non-cocktail cocktail hour and then a dinner the next day over at Lafayette. You're all welcome to come. But So that's the end of Tara's report. Thank you. Okay, thank you. EAEA, Mr. Cohn. Good evening. Uh, Mrs. Miles could not be here this evening. Uh, my name is Jason Cohn and I am the Secretary Treasurer of the Eastern Area Education Association. And this morning I was trying to come up with some remarks for this evening and it's was kind of hard this early in the school year. And 
I realized that today was the first day of fall, and when I was in elementary school, and Mr. Reinhardt was my principal, uh, <laughs> I remember learning about fall and how fall is a season of change. And it got me thinking about some of the changes that we've seen already this school year, and that's really what I'd like to talk about this evening. So first, as teachers, we've seen a lot of change in our schools. The most visible change is the security vestibules that are currently being completed and are hopefully going to ensure the safety of our students and the staff in the Easton School District. Of course, we all have many new faces and names that we have to adjust to, along with the personalities of the young people that are behind them. Many of us are now in new positions, and we are adjusting to that change, and teaching new things that we haven't taught in many years, or for some of us, never before. Uh, with that, some of us are also working with some new administrators and with new people in those types of roles who are also adjusting to some changes. Also, one of the things at the beginning of this school year is the absence of 30 of our colleagues who had the major change in their lives to begin to enjoy their retirement, uh, and they're no longer with us in completing the most important work in our country, the education of young people. Next, I started to think about some of the changes that our students are seeing. And obviously, each year, groups of students move from one building to another, and they see those changes. And they're leaving the safety nets that they've built at their previous schools behind. And they're beginning new journeys, learning new things, which is an excellent change for them. At the high school, our co-curricular activities are seeing some changes with a new athletic league and a new structure with that. And our sophomores are rising to the challenge of the keystone sessions that they will need to graduate. Hopefully, on a grander picture, as we move further into the fall, we can see another change. A change in Harrisburg, removing an anti-education governor who has played games and manipulated facts to hide his anti-education agenda. Pennsylvanians will hopefully make a change and remove a sitting governor for the first time in recent history. Finally, there are two more bittersweet changes that I would like to note. Again, we have two very hardworking individuals that will be starting a new journey in their lives, uh, leading them into retirement. Uh, Mrs. Betty Jean Smith at the high school, one of our secretaries. And as I saw on the agenda tonight, Mrs. Joan Schaefer will also be heading into retirement, and we hope the best for her. Again, as I conclude, we've seen that fall is a time of change, and that we are working to embrace it and continue to work for the good of each other. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Uh, I see Ms. Uh, Jones is not here this evening, so we're going to move to number six, the standing committee reports. And I'd like to ask for a motion to accept the minutes as they're stated in the agenda. Motion. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? <coughs> All right. Moving on to number seven, we're going to see if there are any public members who would like to be heard on agenda items only at this time. Only agenda items. Please come to the podium. All right. Seeing none, <coughs> number eight. I'm sorry, we lost a uh, phone here. I'm going to call Mr. Oden. On the speaker phone, and uh, I'm on the battery for the night. We'll take a with our phone, um, so we have you on our <coughs> cell phone on speaker. At this time, we're going to number eight, and I will ask for the approval of minutes. Also, I will take number nine, executive session report. I will take ten, personnel. <clears throat> I will take all the way down to and including L, health room substitute. Can I have a motion? A motion. 
and and also with regrets or um, uh, for the retirement. Is there a second? With regrets. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, Opposed? Number 11, academics. I'm going to take letter A, B, C, D, and I'm going to stop at D. Can I have a motion? All right. Can I get a second, Ms. Roby? Second. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Building through grounds, we have two. I'm going to take them both separately. Uh, letter A, change order credit for the vestibule project. Can I have a motion? Move. Can I have a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Letter B, energy savings project. A motion to enter into an agreement with Constellation's new energy incorporated as attached. Can I have a motion? Motion. Can I have a second? Second. Discussion? Frank, I will say thank you. I did appreciate the answers and the responses I did get back. It did also, though, open a couple other comments and questions as I read the contracts, which I did read. And looking at them, I think it's a matter of time. I understand the value of it because it's where we've deferred and haven't done jobs and everything, that this is a way of helping to get this done. It also provides a way of savings. But I think within the contracts, we still could use some clarity in some of the areas. And I don't know if to move ahead and say approval upon getting the clarity made in the contract or to make the clarity and then revote it. I don't know which is the best. But I think those are the types of things. And and when I talk about that, I'm talking about, um, and, and there were other thoughts that came to my mind, like one thought was, will the equipment last 20 years? But that doesn't matter. That, you know, when we look at it, do we have to look at a 20-year bond or not? That doesn't matter either. We can only look at 10. That's our choices and everything. But looking at uh, some of the additional work that may have to be done that the board understands, such as if we replace commodes, if we get into tiles, where there could be asbestos and everything, those would be additional costs, which I would expect then that would be handled by Dewey coming and saying, okay, the ESCO is handling this, we are responsible for this, and that has to be rolled in. Well, they would, I think, be, they would be responsible for overseeing who we bring in to do the asbestos. Well, right, but the ESCO isn't. The ESCO right, really, is yeah, not big. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I looked at things in there such as saying, and, and some of this is minor, but when you look at it and say, we get, uh, they're going to give us the report, the two binders, it actually specifies in there how many binders and everything. I'm looking and saying, well, hopefully we get an electronic version as well. Again, minor detail, but it would be nice to get that type of stuff in there. Um, making sure, yes, we have all the reports and everything. I know they did in the email indicate that. Um, <coughs> And at one point in there, in the first, there were two pieces to the to the uh, to the contract. Okay, as it came back out from John. In the one, it says, you know, uh, in good faith, after this is completed, you're going on. In the second part, then there's a reference in there that you're paying the twenty-four thousand plus whatever dollars. It would be nice to see that that's merged with the understanding that not only we can look at the various <coughs> parts, but we can also say. At the completion of that, we may decide that the savings aren't worth it, or we're not interested in that portion of it, or whatever else, uh, before going ahead. Again, minor cleanup. I have no problem with the concept, but I think it's a matter of how we wish to proceed. Do we, you know, do we get into some of these details here? I know I'm not specific, and I'm not spending two and three hours going over it right here. Well, I'd, I'd like to see if we can bring up some, and I'll tell you why. Um, our solicitor and their representation spent time late hours going back and forth and our solicitor um, has approved the contract he has some things in there he needs to clean up and you know they were able to work it out with constellation uh, but our solicitor has signed off on it and said it, it looks like they're on the contract with the district so if you have a few questions um you know i would like to try to 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 bring them up now because we have a, uh, a bad habit of dragging things out I want to make sure not with this, but everything else, we're not dragging out. Um, because he was available for the questions since Friday. So I want to make sure we have a few, we can get them and, and get them answered for everybody to hear. Um, 
before we move on. I'd like to be, not be all over, but John, when you looked at it, you <coughs> looked at it though from a legal point of view, not whether it met certain qualifications and everything. Is that correct? Well, this one. Uh, yeah, well, probably from a legal point of view, I mean, I looked at it from the point of view of, you know, whether or not it was a fair contract. Now, uh, and whether or not it was, uh, contained legal provisions and, uh, and so forth, but, and the, indemn the indemnities that, uh, I, I, I don't, don't necessarily approve of, they fixed in all of those things. Uh, you know, it's not uncommon to move this along that boards will uh, approve contracts uh, with uh, language changes subject to the solicitor's approval as long as they're not material. Uh, so, for instance, we, I think we can fix up non-material language without bringing it back to the board. Uh, nothing that would change any financial terms, but uh, non-material terms. So I think that, that could be voted. Uh, I don't know if you're prepared to identify specific concerns, but uh, obviously we're not, we, we're not in a position to rewrite the contract sitting up here. But right. We can do that, I think, legitimately. Uh, we're not going to turn it over to um, the company for signature until we're satisfied with the language. As long as the monetary terms don't change, I think that that's pretty simple. Well, the monetary terms are in there. That's that this point. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 uh, again, I don't have a problem with whatever direction we're going to go. I just want to make sure, not only on this, but going forward with anything that we're cautious, mm -hmm. that uh, you know the board is doing their job and not trying to do other jobs as well. Yeah. Um, we have a, a, an engineering firm who is through this that we pay monthly, we have our solicitor who we pay for retainer monthly, and I just want to make sure, you know, nobody up here has energy savings experience to that depth to build through contracts and things, so I just want to make sure not only on here, but going forward, we remember that our role is to provide oversight and vote on recommendations and not try to play the positions of uh, our solicitor's firm or our engineering firm. So I just want us to be cautious of that moving forward. Well, although, Mr. President, if, if, if there are some things in the contract that, that where the language could be made clear, I think we could do that with uh, the language things. And, uh, if, um, if you're so inclined, Mr. Fainel or another board member, uh, to move this contract subject to non-material language changes um, to the satisfaction of the solicitor, <laughs> I think that that could move ahead. I, I have no problem with that. We have a motion and a second on the floor, and we're, I'm going to ask the three people who made a motion in the second to, um, are you okay with that? Are you okay with the way John uh, Frank has described it? We're going to clean up some language, if language does need to be cleaned up, as far as all the numbers and uh, uh, dates and things of this nature are going to remain the same, but if there's some language words that need to be cleaned up that uh, uh, were not done, uh, previously, then we're going to do that. Is that all right with the person to make the first and the second? Yes? Yeah. Okay. All right. No other questions. I'm going to ask for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. You want to take a roll call for a little bit? Mr. Buscemi? Aye. Mr. Fain? No. Mrs. Ellison? No. Mr. Obi? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mr. Snyder? Yay. Mr. Pinnabon? Yes. Four yes and three no. Does it pass? We need five. So uh, I thought, I, I don't understand. I thought you wanted to pass it based on, that was your recommendation. So now you're saying no to the whole thing, or I, I don't know where you're doing No. Frank, just to clear up, I was going to wait if it got past the safe here. I think it would be nice when we have things like this, that we can get them out before the committee meeting, discuss them at the committee meeting, and then vote on them at the final meeting. Instead, we rushed it, and I know, as I said, they, you guys were good to me, getting back and forth with the responses, and Frank, on that basis, I will work to, by early next week, to have all this over to you and John. I, I would just like to point out, this has been going on for two years, so when you say rush, I have to ask, where the rush came from. Not only getting it, in other words, the documents themselves, the actual contracts, that's all. Well, and I guess the reason for that was we didn't have approval to move forward until last Tuesday. 
So again, we, I'm fine with, with, with tabling it if, if that's where it is. I'd like to see it on the cons agenda and all planned out and straightened out and actually that there's go back and forth prior to the committee meeting and at the committee meeting we have final review and say yes. I, I'm okay with that. Again, I want to caution board members to remember their roles as board members. We're not administrators, you're not solicitors, you're not superintendents. And sometimes we have an uh, uh, sometimes we overstep ourselves. Um, I have no problem with professionals adding their two cents, but people who don't really have knowledge such as myself shouldn't really be adding or, or you know, we, we get recommendations. That's our job. So I think that just going forward with anything, we need to make sure that the board understands we are not administrators, superintendents, solicitors, or engineering companies. If we are, we have board members that can handle those things, then we can get rid of all of them and save a great deal of money. So going forward, let's uh, keep that in mind. That motion has failed. Moving forward. <coughs> Number 13, finance. I'm going to ask for a motion for A, B, C, D, um, 14, which is miscellaneous, that was added. And I'm going to stop there. Can I have a motion? Make a motion. Discussion? Second. I'm sorry, second. Yeah. And now under discussion, I only have one question for John, my typical question. The uh, student activity accounts that are being added, uh, they're added at no cost to the district. The employees are volunteering their time, correct? That's correct. They're non paid position, the Red Cross and um, uh, there are two of them, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yes, yes, uh, they're both uh, volunteer. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Election of PSBA officer. You have a pink ballot in front of you. Please select for the next next to the name of the candidate you are voting for. Sign the ballot and answer Joan Schaefer. Only one uh, person for office. And number 15, public to be heard on non-agenda items only. Non-agenda items.
the item that he had indeed ingested was plastic, so something that wouldn't show up on an x-ray um, of any kind. So when you have a special needs child like my son who has no speech and can't communicate in any way, shape, or form, to say that he has something stuck in there, it's very difficult to get proper medical care. So after having numerous instances with the hospital, we finally had to have him transported to Delaware Hospital um, because they apparently went in and found what was in there but couldn't remove it. So when we were in Delaware, we had the item removed um, after three different procedures, two sur major surgeries. Um, our concern was that we don't believe, or we believe this was completely preventable. Um, in the IU classroom, I don't think they should have the items that they had in there. Not that my son is somebody who constantly sticks things in his mouth. He doesn't move like that. Um, that's not something that we deal with on a regular basis. Uh, we did have a meeting with some individuals from the school district yesterday and also the intermediate unit and had brought some things to their attention which they were actually in agreement with us on. So we feel that this should have been preventable way before this. We don't think certain things should be in the classroom, which apparently are a common thing that's been in there for years. We're extremely surprised this is the first time something like this has come up. So we just wanted to bring it to your attention. Uh, we have suggested, um, we had made, uh, we want to make modifications to his IEP that he currently has. Uh, we also requested that if he can't get the proper supervision in the school district in the classroom, they need to provide, provide him with extra supervision if he needs to be an aide, so be it, and this should not be our responsibility. Um, I know that they had um, said that yes, it was something that occurred at the school, so it wasn't an issue with that. So at this point, we just wanted to make you aware that we're waiting to hear back from them as to what was going to be done about it. Um, we do expect the school district to step up in some way, shape, or form, take responsibility, maybe for his medical bills that are in the many thousands. Our medevac alone was $45,000. So we think that we should hear something back from the school district. We, we really haven't heard too much. Um, again, I don't know how much would have been put out there. I know it's not something that's probably talked about and brought to the public a lot, so that's why we were here today. Um, so if we don't get a response back, you won't be hearing from me. I mean, you'll be hearing from me more often than this. I'll show up to every meeting. So we just wanted to put it out there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public would like to be heard on agenda yes. items? Oh. On agenda, pardon me. <clears throat> Seeing none. Number 16, any other business from board members? Frank, I had one thing I wanted to come back with. At our last committee meeting, we did have some discussion because I had brought it up about, uh, and it was great to see that uh, recognition tonight on the award for the foundation and everything. And, uh, you know, we had a, quite a bit of discussion there the last time, and one of the issues ended up being about the 10% fee and everything. Uh, prior to that meeting, for other various reasons at the time, there was a meeting that was scheduled between myself and Bill Walpole. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'd like to call an executive session, please, and then we'll continue. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> 
They forgot it. <laughs> they didn't bring them in. Poor Opie. So much fun. They're going to do the meeting.
We're going to call the meeting back to order at 8.03 p.m. The reason for an executive session was for confidential matters uh, in which legal advice was needed and given. So we're going to go back. I apologize for the delay, but we're going to go back to any other business from board members. Is there any other business from board members at this time? Okay, hearing none. I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. A second. 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 All those in uh, discussion, pardon me. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.